Praise the Lord. The Bible says, according to Revelation 19 chapter, first word, Hallelujah, salvation, glory and power belongs to God. I praise the Lord for giving me this opportunity to share the word of God in the midst of you. And I thank our pastor and uh, secretary, treasurer, everybody to give me uh, that you gave they gave me the opportunity to share the word of God. So let us prepare ourselves to hear the word of God. <clears throat> Amazing grace, how sweet the song that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. The hour I first believe. Let us look to the Lord. Loving and Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the precious time you have given to us to look to you in prayer. We thank you for the Lenten days and every day the devotions are taking in our church, Egmont Wesley Church, Lord. And bless everyone, bless the precious word of you, O oh Lord. Speak to us through your precious word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I greet every one of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Religions are man's search for God, but the gospel is God's search for man. And the gospel is God's search for man, and God's great plan is to redeem the whole world through Christ Jesus. And Jesus Christ alone purchased salvation by shedding his precious blood on the cross, of, cross. And this message must be preached to the whole world. Today, to meditate the word of God for the Lenten season, St. Paul's uh, letter to Romans chapter 5 and verse 21. <clears throat> So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So in this verse we say, the sin reigned the death and the grace it reigns um, eternal life through righteousness of Jesus Christ, the grace, the sin and the grace. The sin, it leads to death, and the grace, it leads to eternal life. No, how the sin entered into this world because of one man's disobedience, that is Adam. He disobeyed the Lord and his commandments. So through him, the death came into the world. But the eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, it came to us. No? And through Jesus Christ and his righteousness, in, the, in that, uh, that word, in that sentence, we see grace, righteousness, eternal life, and Jesus Christ. So ultimately, we have to look to Jesus Christ for our salvation and for, for our eternal life. So through his righteousness and grace, we receive eternal life. And Romans 6, 33, the word of God says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift, <coughs> but gift of God is the eternal life. So wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So here we are sitting and enjoying the salvation of Jesus Christ, and we have that assurance that we have the eternal life because of the Jesus 
righteousness. No? He died on the cross of Calvary for us, taking all our sins, all our um, uh, diseases, everything on the cross of Calvary. He has uh, given his life for the whole mankind, and uh, through him only, and through his righteousness, we have the eternal life. And the grace, grace um, in, uh, from morning to till we go to bed, we say, we use that word grace, no? Whatever we say, by the grace of God. Yes, I am by. If anybody asks us, how are you? Yes, by the grace of God, we are all right. Yes, by the grace of God, we got this blessing. Like that we say about grace. So what is that grace? God has given. He is a loving God and he is a compassionate and kindness. So his love and his kindness, together the grace is giving to us only. So when he makes his love and the kindness, the grace. So how we see in the Bible, according to Isaiah 54, 10, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, <clears throat> yet my unfailing love for you will, will not be shaken, not my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on us. Yes, he is a more compassionate God and loving God. He says, even the mountains be shaken. Will it happen any time? Even though they are shaken and the hills be removed, but my covenant of peace and my grace will never be departed from you. That's the assurance God is giving to us. So this grace or the mercy or the kindness is a favor to us like undeserved people. We are not deserved to receive his salvation or his righteousness, his blessing, his eternal life and all, because we are undeserved. We are born in the sin. And so all, uh, the, as David says, the sin always before me. So we, the sin, we are not worthy to receive his grace, but still because of his unfailing love, Jesus Christ, he is uh, giving his uh, love and uh, grace to us. And <clears throat> the grace is a favor toward undeserving people like us. And grace transforms our life to righteousness of God through Christ. So that's why uh, David says in Psalm 23, Restore my soul. Guide me in the path of righteousness of your name. What's his name? Jesus. So he enjoyed the grace of God and he says, Restore my soul and guide me in the path of the righteousness because of your name. His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus means he saves his people from all unrighteousness that we read in 1 John, um, first chapter, ninth verse, confess your sins and he is faithful and just and he will purify us from all our unrighteousness. So we are unrighteous people and sinners, but when we confess our sins, Jesus Christ, he will purify us from all our unrighteousness. <clears throat> and this grace, it lies behind our justification. So righteousness, how we are getting that uh, rightness? By confessing our sins. But uh, to, to enter into the eternal life, we must have some qualification. That's salvation. No? Without salvation, we cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So that salvation, it comes from the Lord Jesus Christ only. How God is justifying us, whether we are uh, to enter into the kingdom of God or not, is it by faith or by grace? No? So when we read the Bible, unless we have faith, we cannot come to, uh, we cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So that faith, it's on Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, full of love, and he is giving the grace. So in John, uh, in John first chapter, in his fullness, we receive grace after grace. 
not one grace. So many graces God is giving us from morning, from the birth of our uh, birth till the end of our life. God is showing grace to us, even though we are undeserved people. He's showing his grace. See, are we justified by faith or by grace? So when we see in uh, Gospel according to Luke, 18 chapter, uh, from verses 19 to 14, there a Pharisee and the tax collector, they, were, uh, they went to temple to pray to God. So this Pharisee, he spoke about himself, but the tax collector, he said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. So when we think that we are sinners, that uh, humbleness, it comes out of our, our hearts, and we say, Lord Jesus, we are nothing, and we are sinners. Please have mercy on us. So that time, this man, um, he is justified rather the other um, Pharisee, and justified by God, and he went home. That's what the Bible says. So you and me, when we confess our sins, from every uh, morning to night, without our knowledge, Sometimes we commit our mistakes and we'll grieve the Holy Spirit. So Lord Jesus, he says, when you confess your sins, that he will make us righteous in him. So that is uh, grace after grace we are receiving through Jesus Christ. And <clears throat> justification is received by faith and also alone, but, and also by God's grace we are justified. And because of God's grace only, Saul's life also changed into Paul. Saul, he has changed into Paul. How? Only the grace of God, no? He's, uh, when we read in Acts 8, chapter, verse 3, that uh, he destroyed the church, and uh, going from house to house, and bringing the men and women, and he used to put them in the uh, prison. So such a violent man, blasphemer, and uh, he's so cruel, no? So because of his ignorance, he's doing all that. But because God's grace was upon him, so God wants him to do his ministry. So after that, when he uh, has become as the servant of God, he worked for Jesus so zealously, the ministry of Jesus. So he says he is confessing in 1 Timothy, uh, first chapter, verse 12. He says about himself, he is confessing, I, I thank Christ, Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength that he considered me faithful, Appoint me to his service. He was a blasphemer, persecutor, violent man. No, even though he was so, um, did harm to Jesus Christ and his ministry. So he used to bring all the believers from all the, their houses and he used to put them in, church, in prison and the churches he destroyed. But even then, God knows that he will do his ministry powerfully. So also, he showed his compassion, he showed his grace to him. So Saul has become Paul by the grace of God. So he's confessing, I am a blasphemer, I am a persecutor, I am a violent man, but because of grace of God, God has forgiven all his iniquities and he blessed him and gave him such a powerful ministry no, in uh, Acts 19 chapter, even the handkerchiefs, when they put on the sick people, that's, they are healed. So, that grace we are, uh, we want, no? In 2 Corinthians 12 chapter 7, we read about uh, all the epistles and the letters, what pa Paul has written. God has given him many revelations, many visions, uh, such a power God has given him to do the ministry. So there are so many uh, 
uh, we read because of great revelations, there was given a thorn in his flesh. We don't know what it is, but a thorn was, uh, as the messenger of Saturn, it's given to him. So three times he pleaded with God to remove that uh, uh, thorn from him. No, maybe he couldn't bear that pain. I don't know what it is, but he was pleading God three times. Three times he was pleading, please, Lord Jesus, remove this pain, remove this thorn from my, from my body. No? Oh. In front of us, Shani is there. So such a testimonial life she has, no? Once, a long time back, as she was climbing the steps in the central station, she tripped and fell down, and her feet uh, was got operated, and the plates were kept. So whenever she puts one step, how much pain it would be, no? So after one year or two years, the plates are removed. So Vijay Kumar, he kept those plates to show to me. So such a big plates in her leg. Uh, these plates are kept in uh, Shalini's leg. So, when, but with that pain, she used to uh, climb the steps during the harvest festival. So that time, Pastor Leonard, eh? so he was appreciating. Then Raj Suri also, he was appreciating. Even though she has so much pain, she was walking and she's climbing the steps uh, to go to their houses to ask for harvest festival. So uh, we don't know what uh, Paul was going through. And uh, he asked God three times, remove this pain, remove this thorn. But what God said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength will be perfect in your weakness. So that grace he is giving to all of us. Everybody is going through some or other pain in our life. But the grace is sustaining us. Grace is sustaining us. Even today, let us... Uh, uh, be <clears throat> God has promised that he will give his grace in Acts 13, 33, when you read, no? Here God has promised to David, I will give you holy and sure blessings. In English, holy and sure blessings, but in Tamil it's so beautiful. Nan David Karuliya Nishayman Kiruvaigal. I will give you, here we are sitting nearly 10, 15. So he is saying to every one of us, I will give the promise what I have given to David. I will give holy and sure blessing to you, to you, to you, to every one of us. God is giving the grace. Hallelujah. And now at this time, let us open our arms to God for his grace and let grace draw you to the winning side. May God bless this word. Amen. Praise, Praise be to God.